Um, well, basically what I do is, first things first is, I never plan a set. I never get to a club and think, right, I know exactly what I'm going to play. I need to always get there half hour, 40 minutes before my set, see what the DJ perform is playing, see how the crowd's reacting and kind of take it from there, really, you know. So I kind of always tend to have a lot of exclusives in the bag because then I know definitely that DJ before me hasn't played them tracks and also a lot of classics because as well as playing exclusive stuff that no one's ever heard before, it's always good to try and teach the crowd where it's come from the sound you know, to a certain point. Um, and in regards to the equipment, I've always been a dub plate DJ, and I've been for years cutting acetates every weekend, people sending me CDs, me going to a cutting house, and um, cutting from a CD on a lathe machine to 10 inch dub plate. But obviously, as years go on, technology starts getting a little bit better. I was getting a little bit pissed off with turning up to nightclubs, and the sound engineers were you know, just sound engineering for guys that were turning up with USB keys or laptops or CDJs. So I would turn up to a club with a bag full of dub plates, put them on the turntables, first intro, bass drops, needle goes, <laughs> skates all the way across the dub. So you think, you know, I'm spending £30 for an acetate, getting there, exclusive music, sounding like the worst DJ in the club. <laughs> and it just wasn't on. So I then stepped up to the CDs and it very cost efficient you know one cd couple of pence i can put 10 tracks on it turn up press play nothing jumps nothing skips so it's uh, perfect so i stepped up to the pioneer and the 900 nexus and the 2000 and i was lucky enough to get the set off a of pioneer so i kind of just started to master the equipment i had indoors and um kind of took it from there really so um is there anything anyone wants to ask or anything not really no Oh, come on, you lot of crap, man. <laughs> come on. All right, well... Um, Plan your sets. Yeah. When you before, you know, when you're actually selecting tunes to take with you to a club, do, do you have a thought process there? Like, you know, like, do you group them in a record bag or anything like that? Well, what I would do is, in the CD wallet, I'd kind of put it in producers, you know, so okay. I know, like, the first couple of pages would be Scream, next couple of pages would be Benga. Digital Mystics, Jakes, etc., etc., and then once I get through my favourite kind of producers that I tend to stick to a lot because I know I always get a lot of exclusives from them, then I will break it down into styles of dubstep, chilled out stuff, vocal stuff, old stuff, and then up from that it would just go long, etc., etc. But I never, I haven't done for years planned out a set mm. because you know years ago you'd plan out a set, think yeah right, you know that's going to go into that, and then that's going to go into that. But then you turn up and they're just not in the vibe and you think, right, shit, I've got to switch it. Yeah. So it's, you just, if you just tend to teach yourself to kind of be good with your equipment, you can get away with almost anything, you know? And this gear here is ideal for pulling off what needs to be pulled <laughs> off, do you know? So, um, yeah, it's, it's, for example, I did a gig on Wednesday and um, DJ before me, N-Type, he finished with a drum and bass track and we had a breakdown in the middle of the track. So I knew, I could see on the Pioneer that we've got screens with the wave format on. So I knew, for example, right, I'm not gonna beat match into the drums, but I've got a break on it, which has just got atmospheres. So I can just, I can just loop it, do you know what I mean? Then I can mix into the loop, do you know what I mean? So I just mix straight into the atmosphere and kind of uh, take it from there. Yeah, I would, I would definitely say don't jump the gun, right, you know, because there's a lot of people out there who think, right, yep, I'm in the studio now, I'm making music, yep, that's my first track, right, I send it out to everyone. Because you get a lot of people that send you music and it's their first tune and you're like, mate, it's brilliant, you know, just keep knuckling down, just keep doing what you're doing, you know, because there's always these guys that make music and you've got to be careful of how you deal with them because you can't say to them, look, mate, to be honest, this track's shit. <laughs> You can't say that to someone because, and for one reason is two, three years down the line, that might be the next Scream, Benga, Casper, Rusko, that might be the next big producer, you know, for a start. But you've always got to, you know, yeah, get your years in first with knowledge of what you're doing. You know, make sure your production is to a level that, you know, listen to other people's music and think, is it that, is it as clean as theirs? Is it as is it as good as theirs? Maybe play it to friends and give your music, put, your, put a SoundCloud up. 
see how get public opinion on your music and stuff first, rather than just go in the studio, start making music, and then start giving it out. You know, I try and get yourself a um, try and get some confidence in your music first from other people. Do you know what I mean? People that you can trust that'll be honest with you and say, yeah, it's good. You're on the right lines and you're on the right paths of what you're doing, but I don't think you're there yet or stuff, you know? Whereas if, or if you're building music and your people have already told you that, look, your stuff's good. Do you know what I mean? And now you know you're ready to give it out. And then there's now Facebook, there's Twitter. It's just, a, it's basically all you've got to do is send a message to someone and say, look, I want to send you some tracks. And like, I get it every day on my Twitter and stuff and people are like, look, how can we send you tracks? And then I just say, look, just DM, like direct message me a link on Twitter. I'll download it, I'll listen to it indoors. Then I just get back to them and say to them like, yeah, this track was good or this wasn't good or you need to do this or do that. But it's, it's easy now to get music out there. But before you do it, make sure you're happy with yourself that you're ready to give it to the DJs you want to play it. You know, does that make sense? Right, cool. cool. Do you want to pass it this way? Cool. Oh, yeah. How, how much do you get sent a day out of interest? Like, how many tracks are Yeah, yeah. Look, I get anything from maybe just two producers up to five, six people hitting me up a day. Yeah. You know, but then you have to spend time going through them tracks. One of them will send you a zip folder that's got like 20 track it, tracks yeah. in, and you're like, oh, <laughs> why? So yeah, you just get like three, four tracks, send them out, they go through them. And if you send it to someone that's got you know, a little bit of respect or something, they would go out of their way to reply back to you and say, look, yeah, I'm feeling this track. Like, I've had a couple of guys hit me up recently and send me tracks and I'm like, oh, this, this is wicked. And they've actually, uh, I've had a lot of tribal stuff come through to me recently. And it's actually, it's actually prompted me to go out of my way and start a new label that I'm gonna start next year, which is just focusing on the more tribal dubby side of dubstep. And I just come up with this idea to do this next year just off the basis of these two, three new producers that I've never heard of, sent me some music. And I was like, their stuff was so good. I was like, right, I need to sign these guys and start putting their music out next year, you know? Um, do, you, do you still think that radio has got a large part to play in, in getting kind of DJs, yeah. first and foremost DJs yeah, out there? On the definitely, scene? You've got to be, a, you've got to be mixing somewhere. You know, and it's hard for DJs to get DJ sets in clubs. You know, so a good Without way. Without being a producer, do you mean? Exactly. You know, you've got producers out there that have never even beat matched a track. They put it up on YouTube, they get half a million views. Next thing you know, they're playing in massive festivals in front of 20,000 people and getting five, six grand an hour to play. You know, and then you've got these other guys that are bedroom DJs that can beat match perfect, but just can't get a set anywhere, you know, and can't get the good enough music to be put in a good lineup to survive, you know? So I think, you know, you get on the internet radios, get on the pirate stations, you know, get on your public networking sites, let everyone know where you're playing and where they can listen to you and, you know, but a, definitely a big part of becoming a DJ is definitely involved with radio and internet radio, etc., and just pushing your name, your brand as much as you can. Mixtapes, giving away free mixes and, you know, but even now to this day, I've in my car, I've got boxes of just CDs that I just like, from my Kiss show, I just, every couple of months, I burn a thousand. And then when I go out to raves, I just throw out three CDs into the crowd and stuff. Because even nowadays, there's people that haven't heard of you, but they always go home with that CD. It's got your website on it, it's got your radio show on it. You know, so every, I think any promotion helps and free promotion that you give to people, they love. So, yeah, if you, want a, if you want a chance in becoming a DJ just on the basis of being a DJ, not a producer, you've got to kind of put your graft in and kind of promote yourself quite a bit, especially nowadays as well, because every kid is getting a set of turntables for Christmas, you know? So, yeah. He just asked, um, like how many tracks do you burn per CD, because I, I guess if it depends on the quality you're burning as well, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, I don't, I never load up a CD with loads because you kind of shoot yourself in the foot again. Someone sends you a load of tracks, you stick all 10 of them on one CD, but you want to mix one of them into one of them. Yeah. So you either find yourself duplicating the CD or just the best thing to do is kind of just each CD for a certain producer, or if a certain producer sends you, you know, five, six tracks that are all good, kind of break it down, have three on one, three on the other kind of thing, you know? 
So yeah, I never overload a CD. And kind of break it down a bit, and uh, so I can kind of juggle in between the tracks, rather than chucking all my eggs in one basket. Can't you link the two CDJs? Yeah, you can link everything. Well, you can have you one. Need well, no, but that you, I can link them, but I'm going to use a key, and I. Oh, you, you can't, can't link a CD. I can't link them with a CD. Yeah, okay. I can link them, put everything on one key, put the key in there, and then flick through and have them all on both. But then, that's what a lot of people do. But then, that's goodbye to my CD wallet. I can't get rid of my CD wallet. I've already got rid of my vinyls and my dub plates. It's, I've got to keep this at least, you know. And I find, you know, we get, we get paid decent money to DJ and our, if our lives become that much easier, it's like, you know, it's like, fucking hell. Come on, we've got to do some kind of work, haven't we? Once you learn how to beat match, what much else is there really to do? Carry a bag? So, yeah, it, that, but it's blinding, it is blinding. I've seen all the guys do it, a lot of my pals do it. You know, USB straight in, everything linked, it's so quick. They're like, yep, next track, next track, next track, bang, 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 bang. You know, all the tempos are all set at 140, click, click, click. But once again, it's just making that life a little bit more easier and it takes, uh, it takes the fun out of it. I like being stressed a little bit from his set and <laughs> fuck, what's next? Oh uh, shit, uh, damn, 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 I have a little bit left. You know, but you can get away with it. You know, I've got like, say I've got a minute left. I think, right, I'll just loop that. Find another track, mix into the loop, you know. The, the better you get at using the equipment, the easier your life becomes, you know. But yeah, the USBs are a lot easier, stress-free, link everything, everything's straight there on your screen, touch screen, flick through it, find what you want, it's done. But unfortunately, we can't link with the CDs. Yeah, I'm sure it'll, it'll happen over the next couple of years. They've already put the big matching button on it. It's only a matter of time now, isn't it? At Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response and the concept is really simple. You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor, he downloads it and then pushes record on the screen capturing software and evaluates your work. So basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on a course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.